Well, thank you, Zara. Look, millions of people around the world have discovered how to make money right in their backyard or in their own homes from resources they, that they own, renting out a spare bedroom, for example, earning spare cash that helps pay for groceries or gas or any other number of needs. This is the share economy that has really revolutionized our cities. Um, in fact, my daughter, I like to tell this story. Uh, my daughter just got her driver's license and she found this share app where she can take the, her car and rent it out as if she was like Hertz or Avis or something. And of course, as a father, I wholeheartedly endorsed that because every time her car was out, it meant she was not driving it. So we slept better and knew that, that she was safe. But, you know, meanwhile, local governments in the U.S. have at their fingertips a wealth of real estate assets that are underutilized. These are dormant parking lots, empty plots of land, vacant buildings in quiet parts of town or even vibrant parts of town and more. What could happen if, like our residents, if governments could make better use of those assets that they currently own? Assets that are, are latent many times of the day or even for years. What if governments could generate revenue from those assets without losing ownership? And if that new money that's earned without raising taxes on a single person, if we could return it to the local community in the form of concrete benefits. Imagine playgrounds, new playgrounds, rejuvenated playgrounds that young children could play on. Imagine veterans who are struggling with addiction who could exit street life and enter evidence-based recovery, earn a paycheck. Imagine new public transportation routes connecting the neighborhoods to areas of town that are hiring, creating better access to opportunities. Imagine filling potholes and maintaining our transportation infrastructure. Imagine really getting serious about our anti-displacement strategies, about solving our affordable, affordable housing crisis and investing in our communities. Imagine the equity strategy that we could have funding to deploy. So under various names, this approach has been piloted in several cities across the world already, notably in Hong Kong, in Singapore, Hamburg, Germany, Copenhagen, Denmark, and it's been done with great success. With this, with the stale impasse of tremendous social needs that are growing and strained budgets that are deepening, now, we, we all are celebrating right now this, this time. Uh, when I was mayor of Salt Lake County, um, we were, of course, trying to figure out how to make these investments. Right now, we're celebrating uh, investments in our communities, unprecedented uh, investment in our communities that I was happy to be part of as a member of Congress of, of supporting making these investments. But this is, is a temporary, this is not a, a new norm. This is a temporary reprieve from, from where we are and where we will be. And we will we'll soon hit a point where our budgets will be strained and we aren't going to have those resources we need to invest in the changes that we need to make in our city in our cities to really have our cities break out. So we believe that the time is right now to uh, explore this approach of putting assets to work. Uh, local governments are literally sitting on a gold mine of opportunity with assets that they have accumulated have accumulated for decades or or centuries. And um, at a simplified level, the concept is pretty straightforward. Government would identify a budgetary goal, including an infrastructure investment, an equity or housing initiative, social or environmental benefit, climate investing in clean energy and climate infrastructure. Um, and then in partnership with experts who specialize in this work, government inven would inventory all publicly owned assets in their jurisdiction. Typically, the value of publicly owned assets far exceeds estimates. And I'm going to go through some uh, work that we did when I was the mayor of Salt Lake County. These are usually developed using historical cost of purchase. So even when government knows what they own, it's what did they buy it for a hundred years ago? And you, you, you might have something uh, booked at $10 when it's worth millions of dollars. So then you'd identify one or more of those assets that are underutilized and put them to a higher and better use uh, within parameters or, that are set by policymakers. So this could be in the form of a community benefit or even a financial benefit that generates a return that enables you to invest in, in other initiatives to support the community. This additional value is, is transferred um, from a latent asset back to the public in the form of the concrete benefits that, that we discussed. And then, of course, you'd have oversight over these efforts. So I wanted to just share um, real quickly um, this work that we did when I was mayor. And, and I have to give a shout out. This work we did, so I was the mayor, um, but we knew that we had an opportunity here. We knew that we had assets that could be put to work for the benefit of our community, but we weren't even sure where to start. So we asked around for really the experts in this space and we were pointed to, we did an RFP, but we selected a firm uh, called Urban3, who was really um, at the forefront of doing geospatial data, data analysis in the urban context. And so uh, a lot of the slides I'm gonna show you, I think give credit because they are um, thanks to the work that Urban3 did 
for me when I was mayor. But so with public asset evaluation, as I said, you're going to look at your problems uh, and what they might be, what you want, what your community is most in need of. As a former mayor, uh, I, I can tell you that uh, we always ran into some, we knew what we needed to do to make a difference in our community, but we didn't have the resources to do it. And we didn't have ongoing resources to do it. Um, so look at what you own. The government oftentimes looks at our revenue, our revenue coming from taxes, from property tax or sales tax or whatever it might be, but we never look at our balance sheet. Government revenue is constrained. Balance sheets are typically very healthy. So what do you own? How do you leverage what you own and how do you value it? So here's a case study from Salt Lake City that um, that Urban 3 did when I was mayor. We looked at, I was the county executive, mayor of Salt Lake County. So we looked at all assets across Salt Lake County. These included not only county government assets, but they included assets in each of the cities. There were roughly 20 cities within Salt Lake County, including the largest being Salt Lake City. So this is, um, this is our assets per um, acre, the value of assets per acre. And you see, of course, our downtown is where these assets really have incredible value. The spike right there is going to be our downtown is, is um, really spiking. Uh, then we looked at public property and what's the value of, of public property. And the blue then is public property. We excluded public property that had no value. This would be our airport. Um, um, and you could argue that ha that has value. We have our beautiful backcountry and our watershed that uh, that has um, that we don't want to develop. We want to keep it in a natural state and pristine space. So what you see here in the blue is viable public property that could uh, be used to create a benefit to invest back in our communities. When you total all that up, it totals 44 square miles of opportunity. Roughly speaking, um, the in, in the black you see there, that's the footprint of buildings on that 44 square miles. It's roughly two square miles. Uh, uh, so there's clearly incredible opportunities here. I just want to give a quick one. This one, uh, this is one we did just for fun. It's not one that is currently being looked at, but this is the high school that my kids attended at the time we did the study in Salt Lake City. And you have this high school right on, on the edge of downtown. Across the street from the high school, you have some incredible housing going in that's generating 16, it's valued at $16 million an acre. And diagonal from that, you have a, a driver's education course for the high school. Uh, if you were to simply cookie cutter and put that development over across the street on the driver's education course, it could create a value of $29 million back to the school district that could fund things like teachers and books and, and resources and classroom. It could uh, make investments into um, higher education savings plan for students, um, disadvantaged students at the high school. There's so much you could do with this revenue. Um, to benefit the, the school district. To look at it another way, the opportunity cost of this is roughly what we're paying here if this were parking spaces. There are approximately 224 parking spaces here. It's costing uh, the school district about $128,000 per parking space. To put that in development terms, you could build three levels of underground parking with the, the bottom level being a driver's education course. And uh, the cost of this land is for... Um, it's costing the school district the opportunity cost. So we went through this valuation and found that in Salt Lake County, we had about $10 billion of public property that could be redeployed. Um, if we simply fixed it and sold it, it could be worth $18 billion. If we developed it at single family homes, all 44 miles of the density of a single family home, it would be worth roughly $51 billion. If we developed all of it, which we thought was extreme and probably not realistic, it could be worth over $100 billion. Or if you just took that 44 square miles and did 4.3 square miles of buildings, moderate density that is typical for the neighborhood in which these assets are owned, that's $45 billion. To put it in perspective, my budget as mayor was $1.1 billion a year. The current value, assessed value of Salt Lake County is $131 billion. So you're almost talking about a 33% increase in property value in Salt Lake County. Now, I don't know that we would do all of this as um, highest and best market use. You, you're going to, of course, for government, we're going to look to do affordable housing. We're going to do um, other community amenities, but uh, you can also generate opportunity that can come back to the, um, the jurisdictions to, um, you know, if, if that, if you did a, a, a housing development that was 20% affordable, 80% market rate, that market rate's going to generate opportunity that can fund new 
affordable housing initiatives right back in the city. So to think dynamically about this. So we are in, in the process of doing this work. We just created what we're calling the Putting Assets to Work Incubator. Um, there's a link in the chat for the incubator um, where you can learn more about that. And um, it is my mission to help local governments to unlock the resources, the gold mine that they're sitting on so they can invest back in their communities and, uh, and create these opportunities for ongoing revenue uh, to finally address at scale our affordable housing crisis and equity uh, investments that are needed in our communities. Thank you.